In this video, we're going to explore what happens to estimates of ultimate loss when reported loss is unexpectedly increased. Actuaries have been explaining this phenomenon for over 100 years to a largely mystified audience. Today, I'm going to pull back the curtain and make the answer as clear as possible in just eight minutes. This is Don Grimm, actuary and owner of Archer Actuarial Consulting. Let's get started with a brief definition. So what is the triple whammy effect? I define the triple whammy effect as the observation that the addition of X dollars of reported loss tends to result in an increase of more than X dollars in estimates of ultimate loss. Now this phenomenon is really just a reflection of the assumptions underlying the reported loss development method. Other actuarial methods are not characterized by the triple whammy effect. However, the reported loss development method is arguably the most heavily utilized loss reserving technique, making its influence quite pervasive. So in the forthcoming example, we're going to walk through the mechanics of the reported loss development method step by step so you can see in detail how the triple whammy effect is produced. Let's jump right in. Suppose we have a portfolio with $5 million of reported losses at a specific point in time. We'll call it time T. The only other information we have is that the expected percent of reported loss at time T equals 66.7%. Now this translates to an age to ultimate factor of 1.50. And we're going to represent the age to ultimate factor by an arrow. For what it's worth, an age to ultimate factor is just calculated as the reciprocal of the expected percent reported. Next, we're going to use the reported loss development method to calculate an indication of ultimate loss. Multiplying our $5 million of reported loss by the age to ultimate factor of 1.50 yields an estimate of ultimate loss of $7.5 million of which $5 million is our original reported loss, and the remaining $2.5 million is IBNR, also known as unreported loss. So far, so good. No triple whammy yet. Let's revise our initial conditions to include an additional $1 million of reported loss at time t. Suppose this amount was accidentally omitted from the claims data, and now that it has been discovered, we want to see how it will impact our estimates of ultimate loss. So let's apply the reported loss development method to the additional reported loss. The $1 million of reported loss times the age to ultimate factor of 1.5 yields an additional $1.5 million of ultimate loss, of which $1 million is the additional reported loss and a half a million is the additional IBNR. Now we have a total of $9 million of ultimate loss instead of the original $7.5 million estimate. Let's talk about some of the whammies that have appeared here. Whammy number one is the addition of the reported loss to our estimate of ultimate loss. Now this piece should be pretty intuitive. The second whammy is a provision for additional development on the additional reported loss equal to $500,000. The magnitude of this amount is determined by the age to ultimate factor. Now, it may be tempting to think we're done, but there's still another issue to consider. Let's revise our initial conditions a bit more. As it turns out, once the additional $1 million of reported loss was factored into the analysis, the historical reported loss development pattern appeared to be slower than previously estimated. After reviewing the revised data, Actuaries determined that the expected percent reported at time t is only 62.5% compared to the 66.7% previously estimated. This means that the age to ultimate factor increases from 1.50 to 1.60. Now recall that the age to ultimate factor was used to estimate our original IBNR of $2.5 million. The revised factor of 1.60 indicates IBNR of $3 million. 
So an additional $500,000 of IBNR is needed to reflect the revision to the development assumption. But wait, we're not done yet. We also need to apply the higher development to the additional $1 million of reported loss. Previously, we estimated IBNR in the amount of $500,000 related to development on the additional reported loss. Now with the revised aged ultimate factor, that amount is now $600,000. So we need yet another $100,000 of IBNR. So whammy number three can be summarized as the additional IBNR need related to the revision and loss development assumptions. In total, our estimated ultimate loss is now $9.6 million, compared to the original estimate of $7.5 million. That means that the additional $1 million of reported loss increased our estimate of ultimate loss by $2.1 million. Next, we're going to summarize these effects verbally. As we've seen, when losses are higher than expected, there are three effects. In whammy number one, estimates of ultimate loss increase by an amount equal to the additional reported loss. In whammy number two, estimates of ultimate loss increase due to the expected development on the additional reported loss. And in whammy number three, estimates of ultimate loss increase due to revised expectations for development on the entire portfolio. So if you need to explain this effect to your boss and you don't want to use the word whammy, consider the terms first order, second order, and third order effects. I like to think of the first order effect as an obvious direct effect of increasing reported loss. The second and third order effects are indirect results of the first, somewhat like ripples flowing through the process. Before we conclude, let's consider two important questions. Number one, instead of additional reported loss, what happens when reported loss is lower than expected? Okay, as you might expect, a decrease in reported loss has a leveraged downward influence on estimates of ultimate loss. Question number two, how does the triple whammy effect work in practice? So in practice, the triple whammy effect is usually mitigated by the use of actuarial judgment and consideration of other actuarial methods. But the important takeaway here is that higher or lower than expected reported loss emergence has a leveraged impact on estimates of ultimates via the reported loss development method. I hope you found some value in this video. If so, please let me know with a like or a comment. If you want to get in touch, you can find me at archeractuarial.com. Thanks for watching.